past my everyone and welcome to my June wrap up which is still extremely late obviously as usual it seems to be a bit of a habit anyway we will get on with it because we've still got quite a lot of catching up to do at this point so without further ado the first book that I read in June was the Very Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is actually the fourth book of his that I've read because we studied The Remains of the Day in school 5e and I liked it so I picked up some more of his books but I tried to read The Unconsoled and wasn't having it. It seemed pretty terrible. Nothing really happened by the end. So, yeah, I kind of gave up on him after that. But I was thinking, I should probably give him another chance. Um, and of the two that I could have picked, I went with this one. My friend recommends Never Let Me Go, so I'll probably pick that up at some point as well. Um, yeah. It's kind of tricky because I think you have to already know his work to really understand things, maybe. He does, he focuses a lot on memory and forgetting and that whole area, um, which is pretty much the exact premise of this book, really. Um, but he can be quite sort of vague and wishy-washy in some ways, so it definitely helps to either know him or to know the subject that he has chosen to examine, you know, the setting that he's chosen to examine memory within. Um, and now the setting in this one is arguably my thing, um, the immediate pre-Roman period in Britain, uh, post-Roman period, good grief. This is what happens when I try to do things straight after work, I just, oh, what is thinking? Yeah, so the immediate post-Roman period, arguably partly my thing. I've, I'm not convinced by some of what he's saying, but I don't know. I mean, it's the story, so he's allowed to make you, I and mean, obviously, I mean, there are such fictional things in here like dragons that obviously Obviously, it's not going to be completely historically accurate, so, yeah, this was pretty good, I felt. Um, but, yeah, obviously, <laughs> might be a bit of a tricky choice for some people, maybe, I don't know. One of these books that makes you think. You might not be into thinking. I'm not always into thinking. Anyway, after that I read Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, which is a really interesting book about a mixed race family, a Chinese American family, and one of the one of the um, children apparently commits suicide. And then it's about how the family deal with that and all of the pressures that they've been living with for being a mixed race family in the 1970s. It all kind of come to the surface in a way because they've all been avoiding these issues. And yeah, it's pretty good. I did very much like this book. Um, one thing which it had in its favour, which the other one didn't, is that this also includes queer representation. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Although maybe not the queer representation you're expecting when I say that, but maybe it is. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, no, this is good. I really like this. It's another book where you think, but I think this one, that one's a slightly better one. In that it's not quite as Tricky, maybe. Anyway, 
After that, I read Ink by Sabrina Vuvulis, which is a sort of near future story about um, set in the United States where they decide to start tracking Hispanic immigrants and residents via tattoos. So it's obviously, I think, frankly, it's even become more relevant since I read it than it even was at that point when it already felt very relevant. So a book of the moment and really quite unsettling the way that it seems to be getting more and more, you know, required. Yeah. But um, aside from the political context of the moment, yeah, I thought it was good, but I felt it could maybe have done with some better editing in places. Slightly uh, subjective, that's a subjective thing though. Um, other people might not see it that way. So if you want something that is definitely <laughs> Definitely a uh, good read. Yes, we we're all worried that that might come to pass. And something else, because I think we've been reading very serious books in June, something else that I think is quite relevant is Guafa by Salim Haddad, which is, it's set over the course of one day and it talks about the um, the life of this young gay man in the Middle East and all kinds of things that are going on in his life which is understandably quite complicated. I did really like this book. I don't, yeah, I did really like it and I felt, because it's surprisingly long, when you think about the short period of time that it covers, um, it really goes into detail with some of some of his issues, um, some of the issues that he's facing. I should perhaps re-specify that. And yeah, it's another very strong book that is obviously very relevant. And powerful and I'm not really sure what to say other than that I would definitely recommend that one. Um, after that we've got something else where the political context is in my mind but it has nothing to do with the book in this case because I was reading Land of Love and Drowning by Tiffany Unique around about the time that Brexit happened. I was reading this on the days either side of it, so it's probably indelibly associated with that now, which is a shame because it has absolutely nothing to do <laughs> with racist idiots in the UK. Um, what it does, what it is about is the history of the American Virgin Islands told through the life and family connections of a pair of sisters. It's really more about their lives and then it touches on the history, um, obviously because they're living in it. It is very strange in places and there's some questionable incestuous stuff going on between, well, between siblings and between parents and children. So, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I, I have questions about 
some of the choices made for that book? Like, why? Why was that? Why did she think that was required? So, yeah, maybe, maybe don't read that one. And then we come to the final book, which I have some unpopular opinions about, perhaps. And that is The Wrath and the Dawn by René Adier, which is incredibly popular and everybody loves it. And it's sort of a retelling of the Arabian Nights. And I don't like it. I think it's pretty pants. It's got everything that I feel is stereotypically bad about young adult fiction because there's a love triangle. They are all heterosexual. The badass girl is so intelligent and smart and beautiful and everything, she is so perfect, yet everything she does, actually physically does, her actions, completely mind-blowingly stupid. So, although we're told that she's smart, we don't see any evidence for it. So... Potential spoilers during my rant here. Um, yeah, she decides she's going to murder this guy for murdering her friend. Fair play. I suppose, you know, we, we might all have felt that way at some time. But then within a couple of days, She's started thinking, oh, he's really hot, I might fancy him, actually. No, I definitely don't fancy him, I'm going to murder him. Oh, but he's really hot. And, like, I mean, I get hormones, you know, when you're 16, hormones. But are they really this bad? Really? So, don't get that one, please. I'm sure there are plenty of better books out there. I can recommend you some better ones myself. For instance, I would say An Ember in the Ashes is better because the weird love situation in that is handled much better. What else can I think of that's good? Um, yeah, I'll work on this because I, it does feel bad to be just saying no, you shouldn't buy this and not providing an alternative because then people are just going to say, so what? So, I will pull together a list and see you next time.